Hello YouTube, Sam here from youtube.com slash onlivegamer for the new Boston and in this tutorial we're going to continue working on the FTP downloader. Now while we're working on this program we're going to be jumping back and forth through different things so you may want to watch start to end of these tutorials because in each uh, tutorial we're going to be working maybe on one specific thing but then we're also going to be working on other things as well. So let's go ahead and get started. We'll come over here to FTP Downloader, we'll select our form and we'll click the lightning bolt and we need to access the load event. So whenever it loads we need to get the username and the server and the password and we need to store them somewhere. So let's make a variable private and we'll just call it FTP downloader Um, as a new and now we're going to have to use our uh, class library that we reference so we'll do utilities dot FTP dot FTP client which is our class so now we have our FTP downloader which is from our class library that we imported so whenever the form loads what we want to do is let's just go ahead and disable open folder because there isn't a selected index in here and um, they can't open a folder and it won't do anything when they click it. So we'll do button change directory and I know that's kind of a stupid name um, because it has nothing to do with opening a folder uh, but that's just what I named it because it pretty much changes the directory. So we'll set button change directory dot enabled equals false and now what we need to do is set the credentials for our FTP uh, for the username, the password, and the server. So FTP downloader dot and now we're going to have to use our server. So we'll go ahead and we need to use uh, the let's see host name uh, yes it is the host name. Uh, I don't know why he used host name right there uh, it's a little confusing. He should have just used server, but oh well. So the host name is going to be equal to text FT, FTP server dot text dot trim. So when, whenever we use trim, it's going to trim any white space um, that is in here. So let's say they add some spaces before FTP or somewhere in the middle, it's going to get rid of those. So this will prevent errors from happening later on. And we'll do that again for each part of our form so FTP downloader dot username is going to be equal to text FTP user and then we're going to use dot text dot trim and let's go ahead let's not use trim in there in case they need to have spaces and then FTP downloader dot password is going to be equal to text FTP pass dot text so when the form loads, it's going to disable this button and set the credentials for our FTP downloader object, which is of type FTP client. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to set, set it to the home directory when they click on home directory so that we can view all of the files in there. So what we're going to do is type FTP downloader dot current directory so we're going to access the property current directory and we're going to set that equal to forward slash now the root directory for all FTP servers is just going to be a simple forward slash and all of the files and folders are going to be stored in, under that so after we do that we're going to have to add all those files to the list box so let's go ahead and we'll create a method to do that so private sub refresh list and whenever they reflect refresh the list let's go ahead and clear list FTP files and we don't want to clear selected we want to do list FTP files dot items dot clear now let's just go ahead and comment this we'll say really important adds items to 
list box. Okay, so now what we want to do is let's use a for each loop. So for each file in, and now we're going to get the directory of our FTP server. So the way to do this is type FTP downloader dot, and now we're going to need the directory. So we're going to use the list directory detail. So what this does is it'll get all the files for us inside of the FTP server. So it's going to split each file um, into an item and each time it goes through this for loop file is going to be different. So we'll type list FTP files dot items dot add and we want to do file dot file name. So what this is going to do is it's going to add each one of those to the list box. Now let's just go ahead and do a try catch statement. So in case something happens our whole program won't crash. So try catch um, and in try. And we'll catch ex as exception and we'll do message box dot show ex dot message. So let's go ahead and run this and hopefully everything is going to work fine. So here's our form um, and let's go ahead we can update the server and let's see here. Let's go ahead and go to the home directory. Ah, Looks like we're getting a bit of a problem here. Um, when I copied and pasted over from the um, earlier from my my version of this, um, it set these to disabled automatically. So let's go ahead, we'll come in here, and we'll set enabled equal to true. So we will do enabled equal to true and true and true. And now what we need to do is whenever they click home directory we're going to have to call refresh list. So refresh list. That was one of the problems that we had before too. So it's going to set the directory and then add all those items to the list box. So hopefully everything will work fine now. So we've got our server which is uh, FTP at a local host that I have here. The username is tutorials and when I click home directory you can see that uh, Windows Firewall blocks some of these uh, features because Windows Firewall, Firewall doesn't really like FTP servers. So we've got application files high um, and a whole bunch of files that I created in the FTP server directory um, that we can access by using this program. And you can also see here that our open folder button has been disabled. So go ahead, put this code in if you haven't already. Um, and then once you do that, you can test it. Um, if you know somebody who has an FTP server or if you have one of your own, you can go ahead and connect to that. Um, so if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below uh, and stay tuned for the next tutorial where we're going to continue working on this.